what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new variation of the extremely popular Enrique Pena Mula. Now this is a, a collaboration and an exclusive with Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Now, if you're a lot like me, that means you are going to see a combination of two of your favorite things, knives and guns, and that's always fun. What you're going to be seeing here today is a limited, I don't want to say limited edition because they're not numbered, but an exclusive edition that you can only buy through Sons of Liberty. You have to go to their website to purchase it. Um, I found this out when Enrique first posted on his Instagram, hey, we're going to be doing this cool thing. And I looked at it and went, oh man, I've wanted a Mula for a while, but I just haven't pulled the trigger for whatever reason, even though there have been some really great variations made available from plain tie frame locks all the way up to inlays and different blade shapes. But the most common version, the sheep's foot, I've always really, really liked the look of. It kind of reminded me a little bit uh, you know, size-wise and, and just the way that it was designed, kind of Sabenza-like, obviously not in the blade profile, but... Uh, in the utilitarian nature of it. So I went, oh, one of these days I got to get one of these. And when he posted that picture with the lava flow inlays and the black titanium frame and the brand new Tanto blade style, I went, well, that's just about perfect. Uh, I'm also a fan of Sons of Liberty, so I kind of went, yeah, I kind of need to get one of these before they sell out. And I messaged him and I said, hey, you know, where are these going to be available? You know, do you have any laying around that uh, I can grab from you so I can get one early before they're distributed? He's like, no, because they, it's an exclusive to them. They bought all of the entire run and you have to buy it through them. So I immediately left that chat message and I went over to Sons of Liberty's website and I ordered it. And uh, it got here in just two days because, uh, like me, they're here in Texas. So I got it super fast. A buddy of mine ordered it the same night when I showed it to him. I don't know if he knew about it before, uh, but as we were talking about it, he's like, well, I'm going to order that. And boom, he ordered it. And I think he's going to get his today. So what makes this so special? Number one, it's going to be the brand new blade profile. And we're going to discuss all this in depth and detail when I get to the tabletop review, as I always do. Uh, but forgetting the exclusive nature of this particular offering, the knife itself is such a great size and such a great action because, of course, these are OEM'd by Riot. So, you know, with Riot, you're going to be getting the highest grade materials. You're going to be getting the best finishing possible. Uh, you're going to get great machining. You're going to get incredible action. You're going to get perfect lockup centering the entire works. So, the other great thing is they're more or less affordable. For those of you that have followed me for a long time and you're into high-end custom knives, this is absolutely affordable. If you're used to shopping for your knives at Walmart, you're going to have a little bit of a panic attack when I talk to you about price. So keep that in mind. And it's really the same thing that, that I apply to guns. And when, when I first got into high-end custom knives, I, I looked at it a lot like I did guns. I'm like, well, you know, you can go down to the local gun store and buy a piece of shit Kimber that probably won't work, and they generally don't. Or um, you could buy a Wilson Combat for three, four, five thousand dollars, super grade six, seven thousand dollars, whatever. Um, and there, people will look at it and go, "Well, they do the same thing. They, you know, they both hold bullets and they both shoot down the barrel and they both hit things and destroy things and this and that." No, there's there's so much of a difference when you level up. Even the best print, and just talking about 1911s, just talking about you know the the basic cheapest 1911 you can think of versus something that's custom made. It's the hand fitment. It's going to be the tight tolerances. It's going to be the, the smoothness of the action, the crispness of the trigger, uh, hopefully the longevity of the sear, the barrel lockup, all these various different things where the cheaper you go, the, the less the quality control is. Maybe the cheaper the quality of the components like uh, MIM parts and things like that and less care is taken in the way they're manufactured. So even your top-end production ones that'll still cost you, you know, $1,200, $1,500, while they're really, really good, and there are a couple I would trust, Dan Wesson being one of them, um, 
It's still not going to match up to a hand-fit, custom-made pistol. And it's the same thing with knives. You get what you pay for. Do they all do the same thing? Essentially, yes, they absolutely do. They cut things. Depends on your heat treat, on how long they're going to cut things. So, you know, a really shitty heat treat on a really cheap knife with really shitty steel... That blade is going to dull after a very short amount of time. The higher quality of the steel, the better the heat treat, uh, the better the knife maker that's making it and doesn't burn through the temper as he's grinding it means longevity. It means higher quality. The more stainless properties in your higher end steels, the finer grain structures of super steels so that your carbides are smaller, you can come down to a thinner edge and have better slicing ability. All of these things are relatable. And it, it really goes down to the same thing when we talk about uh, a ARs. Now, this is mine. This is unfortunately not a Sons of Liberty. This is my Geisley Super Duty uh, 10.3 upper. I absolutely love this rifle. It is, or pistol as it actually is classified. Um, I absolutely love this thing. I've kitted it out the way that I want to. Uh, but I've been a, always been a fan of Geisley triggers, so when they introduced their own rifles, I went, what the hell? Why not? But there is still going to be a significant difference between this $2,400 production-made Geisley, even though they're using uh, their custom components, their amazing trigger, their amazing uh, bolt carrier group, which is self-lubricating, this and this and that, and there's all kinds of gimmicks around it, uh, the handguard on here, the way that it locks up. While it is one of the absolute best ARs you can buy, it's still going to be different than having something that is custom-made, that is handmade, hand-fitted, uh, everything else. So apply the same things that you do with your high-end guns to your knives. Now, this is not a high-end knife. This is a production knife, but it's made to high-end specifications. And that's one of the things that we truly enjoy in this hobby of knife collecting, whether you're just getting into it or you've been into it for years, you know, for a long time. I, I even at one point sold every production knife I owned, and I only owned custom knives. I had you know, 150, 175, just full handmade custom knives. And then the production market started getting better and better and better. Riot really being the catalyst for that. And uh, I slowly got pulled back into very specific knives that were made with uh, extraordinary care, with incredible quality, with great blade steel, better heat treat, all the things that we look for. Now, instead of spending two, three, four, five thousand dollars on a full handmade custom knife from a reputable maker, which you still should be doing as a knife collector, um, there are so many great options in the three, five, eight hundred dollar range from production knives that will blow your mind. So, uh, without any further ado, we're going to end this segment here. We're going to go straight to the tabletop review. We're going to talk about the knife. To start with, then we're going to talk about Enrique. If you're unfamiliar with Enrique, I'm going to give you a brief little history on Enrique. Uh, we're going to talk about upcoming models that he just told me about today uh, that nobody else, I don't think anybody else knows about. And we'll talk a little bit about Sons of Liberty Gunworks as well, because I want you to be familiar with not only the knife that you're going to be getting if you choose to get it, uh, but I also want you to be familiar with the people that are behind it, because I feel that that's every bit as important as the product you're buying. So without any further ado, let's get down to the tabletop and see what this knife is all about.
boys. Here we go. We're going to get into this bad bitch right now. I'm super excited about this because, as I mentioned in the intro, I've wanted one of the mulas for a while. I just haven't sprung for one. Now I finally have, and I'm very glad that I did. Here's the packaging that you'll be receiving. It does show that it is the Mula Tanto, the very first time that the X-Series Peñas have done a Tanto in this model. And you're getting the Lava Flow Carbon Fiber from Fat Carbon. So once we take the sleeve off, we have the identical signature on the lid. Get that open. And let's see what's inside. First, you're going to get the requisite cleaning cloth with uh, Peña knives on it as well. You're going to get the complimentary pack of chiclets. Make sure you uh, chew those up well. Uh, okay, YouTube. No children don't eat silica gel packs. They can really make you sick. Okay. And inside, safely ensconced within the foam, is going to be your new knife. Now, this is a special edition, as I mentioned. Let's go over a couple of things very quickly that makes this different from a regular mula. Then we're going to get into the specs and we'll get into the knife. First off, the black, the blackened titanium frame. This is a black wash, so you're going to be getting not just the black color, but you'll see it's also been stone washed, which highlights the edges just a little bit. And you'll see a little bit of that freckled pattern going throughout. It kind of hides wear a little bit, so I think a lot of people are going to appreciate this if it's going to be a constant daily companion, which I believe for a lot of you it's going to be. The other big difference is going to be, of course, the fat carbon made lava flow carbon fiber onlays. They're not really inlays because they're not uh, seamless within the titanium. They are raised, they're proud just by a little bit. Uh, the other difference is going to be, of course, the blade shape, and that is going to be a profile done in a, an Americanized Tanto. You're going to get a hollow grind with a flat grind and a swedge, which really, really makes for a wicked looking blade profile. And it's going to be a really good slicer as well, which honestly, I, I would believe that the regular moolahs would be as well. I wouldn't think that they wouldn't be. Now let's get into what the knife is all about. So this is the Peña Mula Tanto, as I discussed before, a collaboration and exclusive for Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Uh, the OEM is going to be Riat Knives, and the price is three twenty-five. I believe it was around three sixty shipped uh, because I have to pay taxes because uh, they're in Texas, I'm in Texas, so that's the way that goes. Uh, the shipping wasn't all that much, and they got it out the very next day, so it went out super fast. I was very, very happy about that. Let's get into the specs. We'll lay this off to the side because there's a lot of specs to go through. Okay. Actually, I'm going to kind of abbreviate it. Let's do this. Overall length, 7.625 inches. Blade is three and a quarter inches. Really good EDC size. Uh, your actual edge is 3.125 inches because you have, I'm not going to call it a finger choil because you can't get your finger in there without slicing it up. So it's a, let's just call it an oversized sharpening choil. How about that? Your blade steel, of course, is M390, as is to be expected from the Pena X series. And uh, as mentioned before, Fat Carbon makes the uh, lava flow inlays. You've got ceramic bearings, a ceramic detent, and it is a perfect action. As a matter of fact, I've only had this for a day and a half. Of course, when I'm doing that, it won't do it. Uh, and it's nice and smooth. It's not drop shutty yet, and I expect that it will be very, very shortly. But wow, nice and smooth. Just a couple little jiggles will get you done. There's a joke in there somewhere, I'm sure. Now, what do I think of the knife overall? Well, when we compare it to other knives in its class, let's give you some size comparisons. I just reviewed the TW Price Dawn. That is one of the biggest, most popular uh, knives right now that everybody seems to be talking about. So let's give you a comparison here. Butt to butt, as all things should be. And it's just a tiny tick larger than the TW Price Dawn. So if you have a Dawn or you have a Dawn on order, you've handled a Dawn, you're going to get the idea. It's also going to be a, a nice slim profile in the pocket, just like the Dawn as well, or just like a Sabenza as well. Putting it up against my Terrain 365, 
Invictus ATB with the Terravantium blade, the completely rust-proof knife. Um, the Invictus is just a little bit larger. About the same weight, if I'm not mistaken. Putting it up against another knife that everybody seems to have right now, and that is the Brian Brown Knives Jaeger M, also manufactured by Riot. Nearly identical in its length, and uh, put butt to butt, nearly identical in its length, but as you see, the Jaeger is a little bit more of a pocket hog. It's going to take up a little bit more room with the height, whereas the Mula is going to be slimmer, also lighter weight to carry. And then, of course, one of my absolute favorites, the Avian Knives Atlas. This is one of the prototypes. The pre-order is still going on. They're not being delivered yet. Be a few more months before people see them, but that is the comparison there. You guys have seen all the videos I've done on the Avian, so you know that one inside and out. Very comparable in its carry profile. So if the uh, Avian had attracted you to do that pre-order, then this is certainly going to attract you as well. Now, um, as far as carryability, I hate that word but because uh, it, it's not a real word, put it up against a couple of fixed blades here as well. Uh, the collaboration that I did with Riot based off of my custom knife, the tibia, uh, you're going to be very, very close to the same overall size, but closed, you see there is a significant difference. But what's going to be sitting in the pocket, if you were pocket carrying the tibia, uh, is fairly close to being the same. That's a nice matching pair, by the way. That was why I brought my tibia out, because I like the uh, how they match up with the black. So I, I'm probably going to end up carrying those together fairly often. And up against my, uh, my Hellraiser Mini. You guys know I just started making a Mini in my customs. Um, my Hellraiser Mini is just a hair larger. Um, I am still kind of taking orders for these, but it's not going to be very many. This one I had fun with because this was a, a trickier finish by doing the all bead blasted perimeters with the uh, hand rub satin and the high belt satin on the bevels. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun to make. I had a really good time with that one. I lie, it was a pain in the ass, but I enjoyed the final product when I got done. So as far as playing matchy-matchy, there's definitely a lot of things that you're going to be able to play around with this and match it up to other things that you're carrying. Because in my opinion, this is going to be one of those knives that you're going to carry a lot. Some of the great features about it, besides the incredible action, you've got the thumb stud deployment, so it's going to be easy left or right-handed, no problem whatsoever there. The lock bar tension is a little tiny touch high, uh, but that's also giving you the really good detent. The only time that you're really going to notice that uh, two times, when if you're, if you're the kind of person that really does do this, you shouldn't be. This is just a demonstrative thing to show you because you can't touch this knife while I'm reviewing it to show you how smooth it is. Yeah, it keeps it from dropping free because of the tension on the lock bar. Um, and you'll feel it when you're going to release the lock after it's locked up. So that's really about it. Um, the jimping, that's going to be a big deal for a lot of people. You've got a very small thumb ramp here. It doesn't ramp up very, very high, but it's good for the, uh, the hold that you're intended to put on this knife. You're not intended to choke up on it because there's no uh, finger choil here for you to do so. Good jimping. When you uh, bear down into it, it will bite into your skin, and you'll see it's pulling it off my thumbnail, so that is working perfectly. Yet, with light pressure, you can glide across it. It's not a cheese grater. It's not going to tear up your skin. They did a really, really good job on this top swedge. I love that. Still leaving a fairly stout tip on here. And that's because of the flat grind going across the tip grind. It helps to keep that a little bit stronger. If this was hollow ground all the way out, that would be a much more delicate tip. You still should never be prying with your knives. That's not what they're made for. Uh, but if it were to you know, hit something and tip itself, you're not going to have to worry too much about bending that tip very easily. Pivot is nice and simple, but they did a nice polish job on it. Let's take a look at these grinds up close while the camera went ahead and focused up close for uh, no reason. Really nice hollow grind on the primary bevel. They do such clean belt satins. They really, really do. Uh, Riata is just kicking ass everywhere. That is the Sons of Liberty logo that will be on every knife. It is also marked with the Maker's Mark Pena X series. 
because these are OEM'd for him and not a uh, a co-collaboration. It doesn't say Riot anywhere on it. It is marked M390 on the reverse side. Pocket clip matches nicely. I've heard some people complain in other Moolah videos that the accordion style um, relief cut in the, uh, the lock bar, they felt that it was tearing up their pockets too much with the tension of the pocket clip. I mean, I carried it all day yesterday, and I probably had it in and out of the pocket 30 or 40 times because I was obsessively flicking it and playing with it. I didn't notice anything hanging up. Maybe people are wearing flimsier jean material where the pocket is a little bit, I don't know, the lip is a little bit softer and it's getting in there or something. I don't know. But uh, I didn't have any problems with mine. You do have a lanyard opening if you do choose to carry a lanyard. You're able to do so. Now, on the Sons of Liberty website, it is listed as having a copper backspacer. It does not. It has two black titanium standoffs. Um, I believe that's probably just a simple mistake where they had probably ordered it that way and Enrique was going to do it that way and then something changed with the factory and it didn't happen and they didn't get the uh, the updated specs for their, their data sheet for whomever it is that builds their website. I'm sure that person doesn't really know the product all that well or it didn't have it in hand. So keep that in mind. You will not ship with a uh, copper backspacer. It ships with two standoffs, which doesn't bother me. That would have really looked dumb anyway because there's nothing else on this entire knife that it would have gone with. Copper doesn't go with red or black or the silver tones of the stainless steel. Um, maybe if it would have had copper thumb studs and copper... Uh, pivot collars, it would have looked good, but I, I'm glad they didn't do it. That it just that was a terrible idea. Sorry, Enrique, if you came up with that, and sorry to the guys at Sons of Liberty if you came up with that idea. It just it was it was a bad idea. So I'm glad that it <laughs> I'm glad that it failed. So as far as the size, a lot of people may look at three and a quarter inches as being too small to be an effective utility or work knife. Not so in any way. It's actually a really great size because overall in the height, the thickness, and in the length, it's a very compact knife to carry in your pocket. You're not really going to feel weighted down by it or uh, it feels like it's some kind of belabored thing to walk around with this thing in your pocket. We all have knives like that. For whatever reason, we bought these big giant overbuilt knives and they have their place and they're great. But for EDC, you want something that's going to be lightweight and you want something that's going to be compact and easy to carry. Let's go ahead and weigh this while I'm talking about that. And this knife does all that. You're at 3.6 ounces. Just to give you a comparison, the Jaeger M is 4.3. So this is going to be significantly lighter weight in the pocket and easier to manage on a daily basis. So you've got the weight and the size that allows you to carry it anytime you want without restriction. And you've still got a good blade stock on here. You've got a really, really long bit of cutting edge here because, again, they're not taking away too much from you. If they would have done a, a large finger choil, you would have lost about a quarter inch of cutting edge. So great choices were made all around, I think. Is it the perfect everyday EDC knife? I don't know if it's going to be in this configuration for you or a bare naked lady where it's just plain titanium or anodized or whatever, but uh, beyond the visual things, I think that this knife is overall one of the better options for you as an EDC. Now, there are some people that won't EDC a tanto. They don't feel the practicality. Um, yeah, I can still do rocking cuts. I can still do draw cuts. I can still get in there and dig things out with the tip. Um, there's still plenty of things that you can do with it. No, you don't have a big belly to the blade, uh, like maybe a drop point or something with a recurve or something. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I generally prefer recurves. That's why most of the knives that I make, uh, the most popular ones anyway, are recurves. I really like that slicing ability. However, I really like a good straight edge. I love a tanto. It is good for piercing. Again, I've mentioned this before. You're not running around just fucking stabbing shit, but... In the times that you feel that you may need to do it, it's got a good piercing tip. They've thinned down uh, the weight of the blade, but they've also tapered it down because of the top swedge, making it better for piercing. You've got that great jimping. You've got a little bit of a finger relief here. So while you don't obviously have a guard, it's going to keep you from slipping up in it. 
Uh, like I mentioned, you can still do rock cutting in the intersection between the two grinds here. And the uh, tip is rounded. It's not a completely flat edge tanto. So you have that ability as well. So you're cutting paracord. You don't want to slice it. You just want to push into it and give it a little chop and get a nice clean cut. You can do that. Cutting down cardboard boxes, certainly not going to be an issue. Opening boxes, you're going to put that part right there, that intersection right in there and slice if you're not going to use the tip. One of those two is going to be perfect for slicing through that tape or the edge of a cardboard box. Now, let's get into a little bit about Sons of Liberty and a little bit about Enrique. Sons of Liberty Gunworks, um, they make some of the most kick-ass AR builds that you can find. This black and red is their, uh, their corporate colors. That's why the Lava Flow carbon fiber was chosen for this. So this black and red theme goes along with their merchandising, with their, their signage, with their logos, all that kind of good stuff. Although a lot of their t-shirts and stuff are just plain black and white, but that is their, their colors. While their ARs are certainly not inexpensive, they're also not crazily priced either. And they're much more about function over form while still building some damn good looking carbines and pistols. And they're not as flashy as, say, uh, an F1 firearms build or as race looking as a JPR or a Zevtech. They make competent firearms that are made to be used and trained with that still kind of feeds your inner John Wick fantasies of badassery. So they're still going to look cool. They're just not all flash. They're much more about substance. Um, the co-owners Kyle and Mike formed the company here in Texas, I believe in Austin, around eight years ago, and they started very, very, very small, and they've grown mainly by word of mouth. They, I didn't really see much media promotion or advertising by them, hardly at all, maybe in the last two years, maybe three years, I don't know. Um, I've seen them at shows, they were at the NRA show, was it the NRA show or the Safari show here in Dallas? Uh, I don't remember, but uh, I did see their stuff and I went ape shit. A uh, buddy of mine uh, manages one of the, uh, the huge gun ranges here in uh, where I live, just north of Dallas. And uh, he is a massive fan of Sons of Liberty. They just started stocking some of their work as well. I mean, everything they make is impressive. They've got a focus on ARs machine with ridiculously tight tolerances, high-end reliability, smooth action, and using the best match components to create an accurate defensive weapon that you know, goes bang every time you need it to. And that's really the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, having gold triggers and... Uh, all kinds of neat shit slapped onto your gun is cool and it's fun. And again, it, it feeds that, that inner John Wick that you've got in you, but it really comes down to functionality. You could have the most sexy looking whiz bang fucking, uh, gun there is, but if it doesn't cycle properly, if it's causing failures, you know, every three rounds, what good is it going to do you? You know, we could talk about knives and reliability and its utilitarian nature all we want, but at the end of the day, a knife is going to be a tool. It may be used as a third or fourth, you know, last ditch self-defense type of thing, but you're generally not going to think of it as something that you're going to rely your life on. Your firearms is where you really shouldn't go cheap because at some point, even if you're just a collector and you just have a room full of guns or a safe full of guns, if somebody were to break in your house and that's the room you're in and you grab one of those, it needs to fucking work, period. No matter how pretty and flashy it is, it needs to work. So they do make guns that work. They happen to look good, but they also have some bare bones ones that don't really you know, look all that fancy either. So they've done a lot of different stuff. One of my favorite gun tubers is Aaron Cowan. I don't know if you guys follow him or not. His channel name is Sage Dynamics. The dude will brutalize everything he tests for review. He does crazy drop tests. He'll drop off like a second floor area. If he's testing an optic, he'll throw it on concrete. He'll just the most ridiculous shit. Uh, beat it up against two by fours and does the same thing with guns. And it, it's ridiculous. And he is so in love with Sons of Liberty that he now has a special edition AR made by them with his branding. So I don't put a lot of stock into gun tubers these days because 
Well, we all know that a lot of them are just paid shills. Um, and even if you don't know Sage Dynamics and you may have that same opinion of him because you don't know him, just watch one of his videos. Even if you didn't believe what he said, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but regardless, he's literally on camera beating the living shit out of almost everything he tests. And even if he's not tossing it around and throwing it around, he's running 2,000 rounds through the gun that he's testing before he tells you if it's any good or not. Um, and he does it in a very quick manner to cause failures if he possibly can. So if uh, he is standing behind that brand and he is investing money into a collaboration with them, I would say, yeah, you might want to give them a look. Honestly, I don't have the budget right now or I, I would have bought one a while back. I think all their work is phenomenal. They got a, uh, a new rifle build that they're doing. It's a pretty damn cool called the, the press check. Um, anyway, it's, I, I, I dumped my load on the, uh, on the Geisley I showed you in the beginning. Um, one of these days, I am certainly going to make that investment, especially being fellow Texans. It's nice to support local businesses. But uh, right now, uh, I'm in the process of making a lot of investments, and I can't quite do it. But, yeah, it's going to happen for sure. And that's why this knife is going to be a keeper also because, yeah, it's dumb, but it's cool to have something matchy-matchy. I want to have, I want to have my, uh, my Liberty Gun Works knife with my Liberty Gun Works AR one day. That'd be pretty damn cool, I think. Anyway, uh, a little bit about Enrique. For those that they really don't know much about Enrique, because a lot of people have discovered Enrique only through his production knives. And a lot of the people that review those production knives also don't know much about Enrique. Enrique and I have, have been friends for a long time, probably going on a decade now. And he and I first got together the, when he very first made the transition from making uh, slip joints and trappers and, and, and multi-blade uh, gentlemen's pocket knives into making his very first tactical knife. Um, at the time, I was not a knife maker. All I did was review knives. He and I got together, and he says, "Hey, Jim, I'm gonna. I've seen your videos. I think they're really great. I'm gonna be making my very first uh, tactical style knife. Would you take a look at it?" I'm like, absolutely. So he sent me his prototype. I looked at it. I gave him my feedback, and it was amazing right out of the gate. Because realize this is a guy that at the time never made production knives. He only made custom knives, and those small little multi-blade uh, knives were, you know, like $2,000, $1,500. They were not inexpensive. He had an incredible degree of skill from the years of doing those things. And his finish work was amazing and his material choices. I mean, the guy was really a genius. So when he decided, hey, I'm going to jump into this tactical market because it is so popular, um, when he made the very first diesel, I was like, wow, man, there, yeah, there's a couple little things that would change, do this, do that. But I'm like, this is really well made. And then I got to see his very first uh, revised custom diesel. And as soon as he did that, I bought a semi-dirty diesel myself. Uh, I reviewed it. You can go back. I'll try to remember to put it in the cards at the end. But you can go back in my channel and watch it. And it was, at the time, one of the greatest tactical flippers that I had ever handled. It was amazing. And I think he was only charging like 800 bucks for him or something at the time. Well, times have changed and uh, the knife business has changed and he has developed this incredible line in collaboration with Riot. And him and Ramon Chavez are kind of like the big boys when it comes to Riot. They have more knives being put out, more models, more variations than anybody else. And they're wildly successful, and I'm so, so very happy for him. Uh, like I said, we've been friends for a long time. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, his uh, work ethic, his philosophies and design, and he's just a really great guy. Anybody that's met him at Blade Show or whatnot, you know, he's super easy to talk to. He's a very, very, very humble guy. He's pretty uh, soft-spoken and fairly quiet, but uh, he has a wonderful sense of humor. He has years worth of stories. I love to listen to him tell stories, especially when he brings his friends that have worked with border security and things like that. Um, just crazy, crazy ass stories. But he's just one of those people that the very second you meet him, you instantly really, really like him. 
Um, he's just one of those guys. So I really enjoy supporting him as often as I can. And I, I unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to review one of his knives in quite a while. So I'm glad I got a chance to do it with this one because I think he knocked it out of the park. Uh, at this point now, I think I'm probably going to buy a standard Moolah that has the uh, sheep's foot blade because I think I want to have a couple of these and I want to have a couple of different variants. Um, again, Riot just does an amazing job with their finishes, with their grinds, the sharpness of the blade. I love the fact that they incorporated a pivot collar around the pivot, which if you wanted to, you could anodize. I don't know why you would because this is just black and red and um, you can't anodize that red, so I don't know why you would. But on any other moolah, you could take that out and anodize it however you want. Um, I did talk to him earlier, and he says that he will be introducing a button lock variation of the moolah. I'm very, very, very excited about that because button locks are awesome. And it also eliminates you putting any pressure on a lock bar, especially if you're a, a, a finger flicker and you happen to be a lefty, which I don't know why I can't flick this all of a sudden. Maybe I'm putting pressure on the lock bar. But a button lock is going to make that a lot easier. He's also going to be doing a collaboration with Jason Stout. And uh, you know what? Jason Stout knives are super popular. They're super cool. And I think that's going to be a success as well. That's going to be it for me. This video ended up running a lot longer than I expected it to. But I hope I gave you all the info that you needed to make an informed decision. Um, whatever moolah you choose, in my opinion, I think you have got a wonderfully comfortable competent, sharp, wonderful action, fantastic size EDC knife. If you choose to go with this particular special edition, I would do that sooner rather than later. I don't know how many were made, uh, but I'm sure it's not enough. So while they're still available at Sons of Liberty's website, I'll put that description, or I'm sorry, I'll put that link in my description down below so you can click through to it. Again, it's not an affiliate link. I get nothing people at Sons of Liberty don't even know who I am. I get nothing for you clicking through. You'll look at the URL and see there's no affiliate association or my name or discount codes or anything, nothing. But I'm just giving you the link so you can click over and buy it immediately. So that's going to be it for me. Uh, dimple your barrels and stake your fucking castle nuts, bitches. I'll catch you on the next video.